We designed our new fly fishing shirt out of necessity. We wanted something that was really light, comfortable, UPF 30, but could cater for our every needs. We've got lovely big uh, Velcro pockets for fly boxes. We've got a little zippered pocket on the inside for uh, all your other little knickknacks. We've got a net release on the back. We've got a fold up double collar, uh, press studs for ease of getting on and off. Now the best thing about this shirt is the spandex, which we've incorporated around the wrist and through the inside. So what that does is give us 22% extra movement. So as you're casting and you're throwing your, your arms and legs, jumping fences, running up rivers, this will move with you and it makes it a hell of a lot more comfortable. Second one this morning in the canals. That's backing. You don't normally see that until you're winding it on. Great fish. Bit of sun. <laughs> They're screaming off. Jeez, they, these fish, they look about three pound and they're not. They're a bit bigger than that. Beautiful fish, just on six and a half, or a bit over six and a half. Just I can't get over how thick they are through their belly there. Uh, just in such good nick. Beautiful fish. Thanks, mate. Hey, I'm Gavin from Hurley's Fly Fishing and welcome to another episode of On The Fly. Today we're up in the Twizel Canals. Uh, so something a little bit different here. These are man-made uh, canal systems for the, for the hydro around Twizel, which is in the Mackenzie country of New Zealand. And extremely well known for some of the world record uh, captures of trout in this area. A lot on soft plastics and things like that, but obviously I like to fly fish. So what we're doing here, they're uh, some salmon ponds uh, further up there, some Atlantic salmon, and a lot of the eggs and food comes out and these fish thrive on them. But what we're doing is walking up the, the side of uh, these canal systems and we can spot these trout in the shallow water. And uh, a lot of browns, this one's a nice one, you know, three or four pounds, but you can get them certainly well over 10. And uh, some of the big ones that you'll find in the deeper water on the salmon feeders, they're getting, you know, 20, 30, even up to 40 pounds. So some pretty amazing fish. But it's good just to finally get one. We've walked up here, they're very towy, not a lot of flow at the moment through the canal. So they're very uh, spooky at the moment. So it's good to uh, get one to take and certainly hook up. Oh. And it's lovely cool water as well. Now we're, uh, we're supposed to get to about 27 degrees. And it feels certainly warm walking along these edges here as well. Just get him back in. 
And a lovely fish, plenty of food as you can imagine through here. And it keeps them in pretty good nick. And again, I've got a six weight at the moment, I've got a six weight glide. Because some of these fish, I mean, whilst there's not a lot of rocks and trees and things, they're going to have a bit of power. So something you want to try and subdue them relatively quick. You've just got to let it go. And that's when uh, a good reel is going to come in handy. I've got the Galvin, uh, which I find are the best in the world. And uh, when that fish is going, you just take your hand off, hold that rod and let the reel do the work. Beautiful. And nearly got him now. So that was on a blowfly, which is one of my uh, favourite flies in New Zealand. And we tried a few others, a few different parachutes, just some little nymphs and cicadas, and nothing seemed to work. But uh, put that one on, and uh, well, this fish liked it anyway, so that's good news. Hang on, matey. And you just can't force them. If they've got enough power, these fish are pretty strong. They've got enough power to pull off line, you've got to let them have it. Come on, mate. Just constant pressure. As you can see, quite a small head, but quite a sizeable body there as well. I always like to go head first into that. It's a lovely fish to get here on the uh, the Twizel um, canals, and there really is some amazing fish. We've um, walked up here, and we, I don't know, we've probably seen, gee, actually he's bigger than what I thought, um, some fish that are just massive, and we've seen a few rainbows jump out in the middle, but they've got to be 20, 25 pound, which is pretty exciting for a fly fisherman to see them uh, and know that's something we can catch. But uh, we'll get him out and have a look at him. But he's um, in much better nick actually than what I first thought. But we'll give him away and see how we, uh, how big he is. But just in prime. Oh, well, there you go. I wasn't even close. That's uh, well, one six pound. So that's not a bad fish by uh, by New Zealand standards, I guess. By um, the Twizel Canal standards, I don't think they'd even bother using the net or taking a photo. But. Plus Aussies need to, so that's fine. There we go, so we've got a lovely six pound brown for the Twizel Canal and just the width on that back. And that's where all that depth, that height there on his belly just gives him all that extra weight. And he's he's a solid fish and just a small head, so he's eating in a pretty good paddock, which some of us are, so. You certainly can keep a few of these. I'm sure they'd be great eating, but I'd like to put more back and somebody else can come and get him. He's pretty good to go straight off. Beautiful fish, beautiful fish. Thanks, mate. And he loved that uh, blue ass blowfly. Took it like an ate money, so that was pretty good. So, yeah, that's pretty good. So, that's uh, amazing fishing. We'll keep walking up here towards up the, um, the salmon ponds and hopefully find a few more just cruising the edges. Put it that blowfly, see if we can't get him to take it. Looked at it. Part of why this fishing's so good, if uh, we look across on our right hand side, there is all the Atlantic salmon uh, pens there that are grown commercially. It's freezing cold water, plenty of food, um, and they, they grow really quickly for some outstanding uh, eating qualities. But some of that food slips through the, uh, the pen system as well as when they lay eggs, that also goes through, and the, the trout here have uh, become very used to that and certainly um, hone in on it and grow very big because of it.
Right, I've got one just cruising up the edge here now. I'll put this low fly just to the right of him. Good, nice. That was pretty good. They, uh, I mean, never underestimate the blowfly. It's just an amazing fly in itself. It's something very noticeable. And each time these fish have seen it, they've uh, jumped on it. And a good little fish as well. I mean, that one we caught before, um, I would have sworn it was three pound. And then to get it in that net and to see it, and it's six. Yeah, wow, I wonder. Some of the other ones we've been seeing here, if that was three, and then they've got to be in the uh, up near the, the double figures. Not that I caught them yet, so. But this was good just to we're walking along the edge virtually of the road, the top of that hill, because we need that vision. And generally, the, whoa! They'll, they'll, beautiful. They'll feed uh, upstream as all the food comes, gets brought to them. I'll just walk down a little bit. I always like to have a, a shorter line of, as possible. It tends to give you uh, a little bit better steering capabilities, but when they've got a bit of go, you just let them go, you know? So, um, yeah, they're just good solid fit fish. I mean, there you go. There's not many times it goes into the backing, but that's smashing through the backing there now. So uh, they're gonna be powerful fish. Just great fun. On a day like this, I mean, this is ideal weather. You've got that little bit of uh, sun on the edge that we can spot these fish. And it's just beautiful to walk along there, see them, get that, take that fly hook up. Makes it all worthwhile. We've got him in there now. He's just subdued him there, just on the edge. If you can just see that fish in there. Good solid depth and plenty of go. They're just, there you go, well, he's not ready yet. But they're just powerful fish. And again, you just gotta let them take that line when they want it and just hold that rod up. There's a little bit of weed just on the edge here, but nothing too uh, risky there. So we're in a pretty good area and we'll work him back in. Just very solid, you can just see even through the uh, in that jump there just how thick he is through the back there. That's just a lot of uh, weight there. It's just great fun. I mean, New Zealand it's got it's got everything from lovely, you know, little spring creeks to uh, incredible lakes that um, I essentially think in the, in the South Island don't get fished as often as they should in the, uh, the lakes here, but then you've got systems like this which are just great for, for fishing and they're loaded full of fish. We'll get him in here now, nearly right. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Wake him up. Come on, mate. Come on, buddy. I've got fish there again. Not as big as the other one, but he's still going to go. Just with that depth through the back there, he'll easily go four and a half to five, I would think. And the McLean's way net. Oh, there you go. Actually, gee, I'm a terrible judge today. Five and a half, oh, a bit over. Five and three quarters. Um, yeah, just catching me by surprise, which is amazing. But it's um, imperative that you have like good eyewear to spot these. Without being able to see these fish, you're just not going to be able to, to catch them. I wear the tonics, uh, and I just find they're the best in the in this. Um, it's like a brownie copper lens, and it's absolutely perfect for cutting through this glare and really highlighting the fish. You know, I mean, you don't want to be using like a grey lens or anything like that. They're, they're no good for this style of fishing in the shallows. So you get a nice brown or copper lens. They do a range of different models that you get one to suit, and they're very comfortable, and they will be the difference between catching fish and not. Just the depth again, like you just, I mean, that's a good hand span there of that. And that's where some of these fish, they, they, they certainly will get longer, but they're gonna get a lot deeper as the larger they get. Um, and that's just incredible. Quart to six, you know, that's an incredible fish to get uh, sight fishing on the edge here, in water like that. 
and we just want to support him until he's ready to go. And he's good to go there. Plenty of go left in him. So uh, fantastic. So uh, really enjoying this site, fishing on, on the edge here, walking along the top, uh, virtually on the road, spotting a fish. Quite often getting that cast in like we would in Tasmania, through all the bushes and just getting the fly out there, or walking down behind it and getting that fly in front of him. It's certainly working and it's great fun. So uh, just another thing you've got to do when you come over to New Zealand. Beautiful. Oh. Nice, that was good. We've been uh, walking along the top of this road, and I can tell you it's getting pretty hot. And we just spotted that one just there, cruising up. And we put that blowfly a couple of inches like off the bank, and he shot over and grabbed it. And uh, it's a great fun way to fish. You can cover a lot of water, and these fish, I, I can tell you, he, he looked about a pound and a half and he'll surprise me again. Like the, the other ones looked about three pounds and they were, they were six. So um, just incredible fishing, incredible. Just to walk along the bank there. I mean, I spoiled now and just really love sight fishing. So this really appeals to me to walk. Oh, and it's just coming up. And that's a shame, but I see him swimming off there. But it really appeals to me that you can walk along the edge, spot a fish, you know, cast out, get him to take, and away you go, and it's good fun. So, um, yeah, I'm sure there, well, hopefully, there's another one down there, but if not, pretty good fun just being here. And uh, it's been uh, pretty hard going, the, the sun's sort of coming in and out, and a little bit of wind as well. And uh, we're actually on our way to, to uh, Christchurch to see a man about a dog, so we plan to spend about two or three hours here. We've been here six. It's a pretty infectious place to be because you just know you might only have to go a few extra yards and there might be you know, a seven or eight or a 10 or a 12 or even a 15 pound fish just up ahead. So. Uh, yeah, sort of keep chef sort of wanting to go a little bit further, but I think now um, we'll pull the pin for today. It's some, um, it's a place I'll definitely come back to. It's, it's just the fish and the potential here is incredible. So uh, I really enjoy the sight fishing aspect. I mean, we only landed two, hooked and lost one, and I probably pulled the fly out of maybe about four as well. So plenty of opportunities that you can have here and it's a great place either going to or from um, anywhere in New Zealand whether you're landing in Christchurch or Queenstown right in the middle so it's a great place to be so uh, uh, I'll see what other footage I'll, I've got to show you just to uh, finish off the show it'll be somewhere in New Zealand it's fantastic and uh, yeah yeah look forward to showing you a bit more fish action one just here just cruising you, you heard the plonk you come over oh and he Just walk past. I could see one little uh, fish in there. 
uh, and as it turns out there was two and another one followed a fly back um, and that's terrific I mean you can normally particularly with braided rivers like the the Ariti you normally stick to the main flows where there's going to be water all the time but this has got quite a sizable deep hole so this is going to hold water even in really low flows like we've got now so um, it always pays to don't to, to not discount any bit of water particularly if you've got depth and a nice bit of flow in there as well which is uh, which is good which is good okay. brown again and we've got two fish I can see the other one up at the top there where to go. This one will tie him down. Oh, I know, just pulled out. That's alright. We're just going to uh, get rid of him anyway. But uh, just pays, spend a bit of time on these small little waters. Be surprised what you can pull out. Now, glasses play such an important role in fly fishing, particularly when the water's clear, like in New Zealand. Glasses essentially come in. Uh, a few different uh, lens colours have grey, which is great for perhaps driving, or in deeper water for a lot of your salt water. So uh, for your trout fishing, not really that good. The main colour is like either in a in a copper or a, a light brown colour. That's ideal. Highlights the fish, shows the bottom, uh, and just makes them easier to stand out. Something that is a little bit new is the Luminator lens, and that's in a bright yellow. So early in the morning or late at night. This literally highlights uh, the fish and it really illuminates the area you're looking at. So you get to fish a couple more hours either side when other people can't see. Still in there, a um, polarised lens, so it's great for seeing into the water. So if you're finding you're doing a lot of fishing into the darker times, make sure you get yourself a, a pair of light illuminator lenses and you're going to see a lot more fish. The one right over here by the back of these, these willows. You've heard the splash. Nice. Oh, good. Good solid fish. Come back here, mate. Come back here. Come back here. And that was good. That's, you could just hear that characteristic plop. And that is the dinner bell. Around these willows, that's the dinner bell. Lovely dark coloured fish. Again, just from these backwaters. And they're pretty stunning. And I always, you know, you, like you wonder whether what's better, the, the rivers or the, or the backwaters themselves, because the fish, um, you can get some really decent fish throughout these backwaters, and they're just great fun, because they've got a little bit of time, they're not easy, so you've got to make sure you're casting, your fly, all that stuff's you know, in pretty good nick, because they've got a little, like lakes, they've got a little bit more time to look at everything and make sure it's what they, uh, they want to eat, but the rewards are there once you get them. Beautiful. A terrible job I've got too by the way. Just get him back in here now. It's gonna go. And again just a good reel. The galvan when they want to take line you just gotta just hang on to the rod and just let that uh, line come off as it, as it needs to and that's the time you don't want to panic and go I just want that in the net and hold on that's when they'll just break off and you, you start swearing and uh, yeah, it's, it's no good for anybody there. So you just let that, uh, that reel handle go and let the reel do its work. But I've got to steer him away from all that. And it, sometimes you can do that by throwing them off balance by with that rod on one side and then flick it to the other side. That, that just tends to unbalance the fish as he's tearing away because we don't want him to get in amongst those willows that's when it's just going to end pretty abruptly and then when you're playing them normal hold the rod up nice and high nice little bend in it that'll absorb any lunges and when you think you're nearly right I can wind that in a bit shorter and his head can stay up and get him in the net and we go well that'll work out much better so it was perfect perfect and a lovely brown again, just stunning, stunning fish. Beautiful fish. 
female with that straight mouth there, no hook jaw, in stunning condition, and just beautiful, good to go. Awesome, awesome. He'll swim back over and he'll, uh, he'll second guess the next time he sees a willow grub uh, to eat. He'll wonder if there's a hook in it. Good fun.